place forever. Amen. Glory to God, glory to God, glory in the highest. Glory to God, glory to God, glory in the highest. To him be glory forever. Jesus. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to Christ Jesus. To him be glory forever. Holiness, your glory is proclaimed in every age. As we rejoice in the faith of your saints, inspire us to follow their example with boldness and joy. We ask this through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We sit for our first reading. This reading is taken from the book of the prophet Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-matured wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-matured wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our Lord. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. For the wisdom that guides us. We praise the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, called out of darkness into his marvellous light. Alleluia. Alleluia. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Alleluia. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. And Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, 
Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench, because he has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus looked upwards and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you will always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet unbound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. This is the Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. You might well be forgiven for thinking that we had confused the readings for tonight's All Souls and this morning's All Saints, but these are in fact the readings set for All Saints. Tonight's are a completely different set, despite the fact that both the Isaiah and the John reading seem very much to be focused around death. It brings me back to one of those things that I may have said before, which is that I think all saints and all souls are effectively two sides of the same coin, two different perspectives on exactly the same feast. All saints is about those myriads of thousands of saints that have gone before us who are just there. All Souls Tonight is a more personal sort of feast about the souls that we have known and who have touched us personally. They're still saints, but it's the connection with us rather than the great sea of unknown people that All Saints commemorates. But as you know, the, the church calls out throughout the year various saints. And some of you will have your favorite saints. Some of you may not have heard of very many of them, but they're there and they commemorate it. And each one of them brings something particular about their life and their witness that the church commemorates. So I have a question for you. What qualities does a saint need to have? Give me a suggestion. What does a saint need to be to, in order to be a saint? Patience. Patience. That's a good one, because we have this idea that saints are all perfect and are all patient and never do anything wrong. I have to disillusion you, Evelyn. Many of the saints are anything less, anything like patient. Most of them have a zeal for doing things and pushing their agenda through. They don't want to be patient. They've got something that actually burns within them that says, this must be the case. And quite a lot of them have railroaded huge numbers of people in front of them because they think that they're right and they've got things. So patience is something that's a bit of a dual thing. Is there any other suggestions? Yes. Selflessness. 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 Now that is a good one. Selflessness. Do you know anything of St. Wilfrid? No, no. Wilfrid is one of those great English saints. Selfless is not a description that Wilfrid could, could be attached to Wilfrid. What Wilfrid did, Wilfrid managed to offend almost everybody in his lifetime, to such an extent that he actually had to go into exile twice to save his life. And at the end of it, he really hadn't succeeded at all. Wilfrid really isn't a very good idea of a person that is selfless. Any other suggestions of what a saint might be? Compassionate. 
Yes, that is a good one, because we always think that saints always have a good feeling for other people. But not all saints are compassionate. Thomas Aquinas is one of my favourite saints, simply for the fact that when he was created a saint, they had to make up a whole new category of saints in order to make him one, because he fitted into none of the other categories at all. Again, a bit like Wilfred, he was probably a bit on the unpleasant side, but he did have something that showed what God was. His theology has effects on today's church about how we think about God and how we think about how God is seen in our lives. So he wasn't terribly good. And the fact is that every saint and every quality you can think of that will make a perfect saint, you can find a saint that really doesn't have that in spades. Because I'm sure, personally, that sainthood isn't about being perfect. It's not about being nice. It's not about being compassionate. It's not about being selfless. It is about, about being holy. No, I don't think it is. I don't think being a saint is about being holy at all. But what I do think a saint is about is about being able to let God's love shine through. And it's that little spark of God's love shining through that is what makes people saints. But that spark of God's love isn't restricted to those that we commemorate in the calendar. It's not restricted to all of those big names. Over this last couple of years during COVID, we've had pause to think about who are the people around us that actually make our lives work? Who are the people that have made living possible? Who are the people that have been a little self-sacrificing, but have done those jobs that have meant that others suddenly see their worth? And it's people like the doctors and the teachers and the nurses and the delivery drivers and the bin men and all of those jobs that we take for granted who have shown God's love and that spark of humanity shining through. Because every one of us has that ability within us. And when we die, we too will be numbered amongst the saints because it's about love. And this is where I think today's gospel reading actually comes in. It's not about death and about resurrection. It's about life. It's about love and it's about hope. And those things we can all show each other in our community. Because that's what All Saints is about. It's about celebrating the godliness in the ordinary. It's that which is in us that makes God love, God's love shine through and become apparent. Because we are all saints in our own way. None of us are perfect. Some of us are holier than others. But we've all got it within us that we can show and share and see. Amen. stand together to sing the food.
people, a people who are prepared to give of themselves. May the saints in heaven be an example for us. Loving God, we praise your name with all that you have created. You are present in the whole universe and in the smallest of creatures. We acknowledge the responsibilities you have placed upon us as stewards of your good creation. May the Holy Spirit inspire all political leaders at the COP26 in Glasgow now as they seek to embrace the changes needed to create a more sustainable society. Instill in them the courage and compassion to implement fairer solutions for the poorest and the most vulnerable. May we not lose this chance to repair our damaged earth. Lord, in your mercy. God of compassion, bring healing and peace to all nations in conflict, where there is political instability and where COVID still rages through the population. Protect those who are poor and hungry and give them hope. Move those with plenty to share with those who have little and help all people to love their neighbour as themselves. We thank you for the work of Tear Fund around the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of justice, keep us from being preoccupied with worldly things. Help us to be mindful of the problems of others. Help us to demonstrate our love for you in our daily lives and in our wider community. Make us quick to forgive and slow to condemn and help us to strive for peace in our families, in our country and in the world. Lord, in your mercy. God of the living and of the dead, we thank you for the saints who have helped us on our journeys of faith, encouraged, encouraged us when we felt like giving up, taught us our faith, faith and who made the ultimate sacrifice of their lives, striving for a better world, following the example of your only son, Jesus Christ. We pray for our community here, our churches, their congregations, wardens, and for all those who work tirelessly behind the scenes. Lord, in your mercy. God of love, we pray for children and young people. We give thanks to Bia, Maya, and Carol, who will, conf who will be confirmed this Saturday at St. Paul's Cathedral. Please protect all our young children from harmful influences on them from the culture in which we live, their peers and social media, as they seek to grow into the fullness of Christ, into the fullness of Christ. Keep them safe and by the power of your spirit, help them feel your presence with them in all situations. Lord, in your mercy. God of healing, we pray, we pray for all who are suffering pain, bereavement, anxiety, or depression. We pray that they will feel your arms of healing, love, comfort, and compassion, surrounding and holding them close. In a moment of silence, let us pray for those who might be in your mind this morning. We lift up before you this morning those in our benefice who are especially in need of your healing presence. The sick, Caroline Bennett, Alex Taylor, Amber Sinclair, Jackie Proctor, Louis St. Pierre, Ruth Lewis, Rupert Peretz, Aaron Cook, John Bartlett, Jill Trey, Angus Sterling. We pray for, the, for those recently departed, Ray Vondrell. We pray for the anniversary of death, Strephon Mahon, John Graves Sr., John Graves Jr., Constance Carsajan, Rosamond Buck, Ellis Gummer, Adam Broxton Peacock, Marianne Fisher, Christopher Buckmaster, John Davenport. Lord, in your mercy. God of all, as we leave here today, we give thanks for the love you have shown to our world through your saints. May we, week by week, continue to celebrate and share your love with all the world. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We stand for the peace.
Blessed are the peacemakers, they shall be called children of God. We meet in the name of Christ and we share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us share with one another the sign of God's peace in our socially distanced usual way.
Father of all, we give you thanks for every gift that comes from heaven. To the darkness, Jesus came as your light. With signs of faith and words of hope, he touched untouchables with love and washed the guilty feet. This is his story. This, this is, is our song, Hosanna Son. in the highest. The crowds came out to see your son, yet at the end they turned on him. On the night he was betrayed, he came to table with his friends to celebrate the freedom of your people. This is his story. This is our song, Hosanna in the highest. Jesus blessed you, Father, for the food. He took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and said, This is my body, given for you. And Jesus gave thanks for the wine. He took the cup. He gave it, he said, This is my blood, shed for you all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. This is our story. This is our song, Hosanna in the highest. Therefore, Father, with this bread and this cup, we celebrate the cross on which he died to set us free. Defying death, he rose again and is alive with you to plead for us and all the world. This is our story. This is our song, Hosanna in the highest. Send your spirit on us now that by these gifts we may feed on Christ with open eyes and hearts on fire. May we, all who share this food, offer ourselves to live for you and be welcomed at your feast in heaven, where all creation worships you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessing, Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. prayers with the saints throughout the ages, praying as our Saviour for us. Our Father, who is God, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into poverty, but deliver us
Let us pray. God, the source of all holiness and giver of all good things, may we who have shared at this table as strangers and pilgrims here on earth be welcomed with your saints to the heavenly feast on the day of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We pray together. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and the blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Do please be seated for a few notices. It's lovely again, as I say, to see you all this morning. Uh, there is tea and coffee after the service. Do stay behind for that. Uh, we need people in future to help with tea and coffee. If you're able to do that uh, on an occasional basis, do let Dana know. And also the occasional lift is needed. So if you're able to do that, please also, also uh, let Dana know. Uh, this evening is our All Souls Requiem Mass. It's at St John the Baptist, our sister church. It's a beautiful service. Sing, uh, we've, got, we've got St John the Singer singing part of Roy's Requiem. And our guest speaker is Christopher Lewis, who uh, was the uh, Dean of Christ Church, Oxford. Uh, an excellent speaker, so do come on again at 6.30 this evening. Uh, thank you for all who have given to, uh, to the renovation project of St George's. We have had the builders in, they're going to start work in January. Uh, we're still £20,000 short, but we're almost there. Uh, but in faith, we're going to start the works in January and they should take, well, who knows, the, the builders say three to four months, but goodness knows how long. But uh, let's hope, three to four months before Easter, we, again, we say in faith. Uh, Bishop of Kensington is doing three talks on the creeds. The first one is here at St George's. It's next week, 10th of November. Do please come along if you can. Um, I can't see what the time is there. I think it's 7 o'clock for 7.30. So do come along. It's also going to be uh, put on Zoom and I think it's about 100 people already signed up in other parts of the area of Kensington. Um, so, but do please try to come and support uh, the bishop as he gives this talk here at St George's on November the 10th. St Paul's Cathedral have an annual gorgeous uh, Advent carol service. It's on the 27th of November. It'd be nice to have a group of uh, people from this church and St John's going. Uh, do let the office know if you're interested. Uh, I think. I think that is all the announcements uh, this morning. What happens next? It's been so long since I've been here. <laughs> uh, the notices. Oh, we sing a final hymn. Please stand as we sing.
riches of his grace. Amen. May he give you joy in their fellowship and a share in their praises. Amen. May he strengthen you to follow them in the way of holiness and to come to the fullness of radiance of glory. Amen. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Following God's saints in the ways of holiness and truth, go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.